Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this lecture, we are going to start our discussion of organic chemistry, and we are going to be talking about different types of hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons, as you might guess from the name, involve things like hydrogen and carbon compounds. And there are very many of these, and they can become very complex. So let's go ahead and get started here. And we want to start off with looking at what we mean by organic compounds. And they are based on carbon atoms and the chemistry of carbon, which is interesting because carbon is able to form multiple strong bonds with other atoms. And that allows for very many complex and long molecules that are able to be formed. As you recall, carbon has four electrons in its outer shell and therefore is very good at making lots of bonds and bonding with multiple other atoms. And with the hydrocarbons are the very simplest organic compounds that we look at, and they're composed of two elements, carbon and hydrogen. And it, you may think there's only one way to put carbon and hydrogen together, but we'll see that there are many, many ways for these to be put together. And they have many uses in terms of fuels and plastics in which they can be used. Now, as we start off with these, the first we want to look at are the alkanes. Alkanes are what are called saturated hydrocarbons. And what a saturated hydrocarbon means is that they have one single covalent bond between each carbon atom. So each carbon atom in them has just one bond with another carbon atom. So if you see in each of these examples, each carbon atom has one single bond. They have a specific formula given by C with the subscript N and H with the subscript of 2N plus 2. Meaning if you have one, if N is one, then there would be one carbon atom and two times one plus two would mean four hydrogen atoms and would give you methane or CH4. If N was two, you would then have two carbon atoms and two times two is four plus two more is six, giving you ethane. And you can continue that on if you want to look at our other example here, which is pentane. If you put n equal to 5, then 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12, meaning that pentane will have 5 carbon and 12 hydrogen atoms. And we will see that these can actually vary in very specific ways that we can follow and we can make a table of some of these. And here we see them starting with the very simplest of methane, which is just one carbon atom. But we can see how we can increase the number of carbon atoms as we go up here in the table to 18. And we notice that the properties change generally in a predictable pattern in that the melting point tends to get larger and larger as you go down the table, as you make it more complex. The boiling point also gets larger. The phase changes. So we have gas for the first, fewer gases. Then we have a set that are liquid, and we have a set that are solid. And remember that that can vary by temperature and pressure. Here we are talking about standard temperature and pressure. The other thing we see are the number of isomers. So how many different varieties we can see of these. And we'll look at isomers here in just a minute. But we see that the number of isomers increases greatly as you work your way down from very simple organic compounds, very simple alkanes, down to more complex ones. Now let's go ahead and review what we mean by an isomer. And what an isomer is, is a are hydrocarbons that have the same formula but different structures. So how can this work? Well, we look, for example, at butane here. We call N-butane is the normal butane, which has an unbranched chain. All the carbon atoms are in a line together here. And then each hydrogen atoms attach to those with three on the ends and two in the middle to fill up those shells. So no carbon atoms are bonded to more than two other carbon atoms. So each carbon atom here in the middle has one carbon on each side, but there are no carbon atoms with more than that. 
the isobutane has a carbon atom here, which is actually bonded to three different carbon atoms. And what we see is that they actually have different structures. So this one, when we look at the actual structure, is more of a linear structure, whereas this one is different, differently shaped. And they will have completely different properties, even though their formula is exactly the same. As we see, this is going to be C4 for carbon atoms, and we can count the hydrogen atoms. H would be 10. And that follows the pattern that we looked at before. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 more is 10. And this has exactly the same. This has 4 carbon atoms, and it also has 3 up here. 2 more, that makes 5. 2 more make 7, and 3 around this carbon atom makes 10. So this is also C4H10, but they are not the exact same material because of the way everything is bonded together. So they have, again, the same formula, but very different structures. Now, how do we go about naming the alkanes? Well, first of all, what we do is we look for the longest chain of carbon atoms. So, we simple ones start off with ethane for 2, 3 is propane, 4 gives you butane. Once we get to 5, they start to follow a specific pattern. 5 is pentane, and you may recognize the prefix that we've used in the past. Pent for 5. Hex for 6, giving us hexane. Hept for 7, giving us heptane. And oct for 8, giving us octane. So we can use that, and we can also use the prefix to identify the position and name of any substitute, substitutes. So there are cases where we're looking right now, we're looking at C and H, but we can replace those atoms by others, and that will use this pre a prefix to indicate these. So let's look at some examples as to how we do these to make this a little more clear. So when we look at these, here are some examples. We can have propane. Propane has one, two, three carbon atoms. And as you note, everything is split up with just hydrogen. So there is no difference there. And it's written, sometimes written a little bit differently like this. This is the first CH3, one carbon with three hydrogen atoms on that end, one carbon with three hydrogens on that end, but in the middle there's a carbon with two hydrogen atoms. So we can actually write these formulae in different ways. So we can also do others. As I said, you could do substitutions. So if you recall, we take what we had right here, and we're now substituting. We're taking one of these hydrogens and replacing it with chlorine. Well, it is chloropropane then, but it's two chloropropane. Why is it two? Because the chlorine is attached to the number two carbon atom. The atoms are numbered here, one, two, and three, and then it will give you, that will tell you which one is being replaced there. So we can use that. That will give us the number two. The chloro says that we've replaced it with chloro, chlorine. And because it has three carbon atoms, it will be propane. So two chloropropane. Now we can also do this again. And here we're replacing it with instead of just a single atom with a methyl group. So this would, you might recognize CH3 as almost being methane. Methane would be CH4. So this is a methyl group, which is now attached to one of these carbon atoms. So again, we start off with the base of propane. We take away one of those hydrogen atoms and instead replace it by CH3. And it's attached to the number two carbon atom here. So it again is two. It's a methyl group, so it's two methyl. And then, of course, the underlying was propane. Now we have a couple examples of hexanes here as well. And hexane will have six carbon atoms that we can see counted here. And in this case, we are having fluorine replace one of the carbon, one of the hydrogen atoms. And in this case, they are attached to the number four and the number two carbon atoms. So it is two comma four because those are the two carbon atoms where a replacement has occurred. And it is difluoro because there are two fluorines that have been put in there, and it is hexane. Hexane, again, just means that there were six carbons in the chain. 
Now we can also look at another example here. Again, this is also going to be a hexane, six carbon atoms, and it has two replacements. It has bromine attached to carbon number one, chlorine attached to carbon number three. So since bromine is on carbon one, it is one bromo. Since chlorine is on number three, Three, it's three chloro, and then hexane for the underlying structure. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples of these because the naming can cause some difficulty here. And let's look at an example. Let's go ahead and name this molecule. Well, what do we want to look at first? Well, we can first start by looking at where we see various atoms, and we can say that chlorine is attached to carbon number one. So we see they have the carbons numbered there, and chlorine it replaces a hydrogen for carbon one. We can see that bromine is attached to carbon number two. So here's bromine here taking the place of a hydrogen on carbon number two. Three and four are as normal because they have just their normal hydrogens attached to them. And we therefore can name this molecule, and it is going to be 2 bromo. 1 chloro butane remember 4 is a but four carbons the butane comes from the four carbon atoms and the 1 chloro is the one chlorine attached to the one carbon and bromo is the two attached uh, sorry the bromine attached to the number 2 carbon atom now, how do these relate? What are some of these used for? Well, one prominent thing that hydrocarbons are that we're used to every day is different types of fossil fuels. And those are things like gasoline, kerosene, fuel oil, which all come from crude oil in the first place. And the image here from the textbook shows the crude oil coming in. And then as it is heated there, it is separated uh, by different densities. And we note that we end up with small molecules up at the top and large molecules at the bottom. So these small molecules have a very low boiling point, very volatile, flow very easily, and ignite easily. So things like gasoline will go to the top. So this is how we can refine the oil to make different products. Things like gasoline, kerosene, and diesel can all be used in different ways here and all have all are basically hydrocarbons with carbon and hydrogen, but have different numbers of atoms in them. So they'll have different numbers of carbon atoms. As we get down to the bottom at the fuel oil, we then have large molecules, which have high boiling points and are not as volatile. And those end up down at the very bottom here. So these can be separated by heating up crude oil, which is a mixture of all of these and allowing them to separate. Now let's go ahead. We looked at the ones here. We looked at the um, alkanes here, let's look at another type, which are called the alkenes. Now, while it sounds very similar, these are examples of unsaturated hydrocarbons, and alkenes are those that are going to have double bonds between a pair of carbon atoms. So they will have one or more double bonds, and the simplest of these is ethene. So ethane was one, and ethene will have a double bond between the carbon atoms, so it will have less hydrogen. If we had a single bond here, then that would free up an electron for each carbon, and we would have three uh, hydrogens on each. So if we were looking at uh, ethane, then that would have had three hydrogens. Here we have a double bond between the carbon atoms, and that gives us ethene. So this would be C2. H4. This would be the simplest of them because you have just two carbon atoms. But you could do it with three as well. And here you would again have uh, propene, like propane, but propene means you have a double bond there. And the formula will change. This will be C3. And you count the hydrogen atoms. They are, there are six of them, so H6. And butane, butene, you can do the same thing with. There's going to be four carbons, C4. And then you can count that there will be eight hydrogen atoms. So C4, H8. 
So it's very similar to what we had for the alkanes, but in this case we are going to have two less hydrogen atoms in each case. If you had ethane, it would be C2H6. If you had propane, it would be C3H8. And if you had butene, it would be C4H10. However, here you have that double bond removes a couple of hydrogen atoms and makes a different type of molecule. Now, how do we go about naming these? Well, we can do similar type of things. They're named with the name of the alkane with the same number of carbon atoms. So you start with what you had with the alkanes, and you replace the ane suffix with an ene suffix. So what was ethane with the double bonds now becomes ethene. Propane becomes propane, propene. Butane becomes butene. In both of these cases, just here we have different ones. This is one butene because you have to number the carbon atoms now and say here it is the number one carbon atom that has the double bond. And here it is the number two carbon atom that has the double bond. You start with the lowest number that is attached to that double bond. So you can have two different ones. And again, these two are different materials. They are not exactly the same because of the location of that double bond it gives us a different structure. And in fact, we can look at some isomers for these just as we did with the alkanes. And we can have structural isomers and geometric isomers. So there can be uh, different types that just are, uh, we can have the structural ones or what we've looked at before. We, we can have a different arrangement of the atoms where the atoms are arranged differently. So here we have carbon, 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 carbon in a nice chain. But we have the double bonds can be in different places. So here we have, for example, the CH3 bonded at the very end. Here, those CH3s are bonded to each of the carbon atoms. And we can also get, so that's a different arrangement. So this is one butene and two butene, but you can also get a geometric isomer where the double bonds, since the double bonds are more rigid, you can actually change these. So you could have something like this and something like this one where they're exactly the same. The only difference is you flipped one hydrogen with one CH3. And therefore you get a completely different geometric isomer just because of the geometry because this double bond is so much stronger. Now, the isomers will have different properties, so they will not be exactly the same. You will find things like different boiling points or melting points for these materials. So while this is both two butene, you can have the cis isomer or the trans isomer, depending on exactly how they are set up. And note how the structures in the structural design are actually quite different as well. All right, now we've got one more to look at here, and those are the alkynes. Alkynes, as you might guess from what we've looked at, we had alkanes with single bonds, alkenes with double bonds. Alkynes are the ones with triple bonds. So you will have one or more triple bonds between these. And the simplest of these is ethene. So ethene is just two carbon atoms, and then has one hydrogen atom on each end. So ethane had three hydrogen atoms on each, ethene had two hydrogen atoms on each end, and ethine has one hydrogen atom on each end. So this is C2H2. The only thing we change with the naming is that now we're using Y-N-E for the suffix instead of A-N-E or E-N-E. And just to recall, A-N-E meant you were looking at single bonds, just one bond between each pair of carbon atoms. E-N-E has two, at least one of them has two, and Y-N-E has at least one that has the triple bond. All right, so getting ready to finish up here, the last thing we want to look at is what we call aromatic hydrocarbons. And these are hydrocarbons with a ring structure, so where they actually bond into a ring where carbon comes around and bonds with the carbon. So instead of a chain, we form a ring of these. The simplest one is benzene. 
benzene is C6H6, six carbon atoms. Note that we have several double bonds here on them and several single bonds. And that is necessary. If we did double bonds on all of them, then you would have no hydrogen. It would just be carbon. So the single bonds here allow for carbon atoms to at least have one hydrogen associated with them. The bonding structures become very complex, so it's not just individual single and double bonds, but you get this entire ring structure of the carbon, and this is what we call an aromatic hydrocarbon, and we will come back and look at some of these later on in future lectures. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary. And we looked at three different types of materials. We looked at alkanes, which are what we call saturated hydrocarbons with only single bonds. We had the alkenes, are unsaturated hydrocarbons, which have double bonds, at least one double bond. And the alkynes have at least one triple bond. And yes, just like the alkenes, these are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So that concludes this lecture on hydrocarbons. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.